from a fraction, what will 4 and 8 go in with into? 8. Got it, kids. We're working this time. So this one's going to stay. So what's 1 4 the same as with 8? 2 8. 2 8. Good job. So now it's different signs. So I subtract 3 minus 2 is 1. So I got 1 8. But do I need a positive or a negative 1 8? Negative. Very good because 3 is bigger and it's negative. Good job. Okay. Any addition questions? Nope. We did the same signs, we did different signs. Everybody good on addition? Alright, going to subtraction. I got number one here, 12 minus negative 5. Negative 11.5 minus negative 6.3. One more here, 3 fourths minus negative 2 thirds. All right, now I'm going to explain this through the way I did a long time ago. A long time ago, I used to teach middle school math. And this stuff right here, this subtracting with positives and negatives, is huge in middle school math. It's probably the most important thing that they go over and start learning. And when we did this, when I used to teach it, we would go through the addition stuff and we would make a list of all those rules that I didn't list for you. We just talked about them because we're seniors and we know them, right? But then we got to subtraction and they wanted to make a list of the rules. And I said, no, we're not making a list of the rules. What we're going to do is change our subtraction problem to an addition problem and use additions rules. So how do you legally... Kaylee hey, Ramsey, please come to the high school office. How do you legally change subtraction to addition? Don't write the same unless you're just dying to write something. 5 minus 1, is that not the same as 5 plus negative 1? Yeah. So we can change this, to, this from subtraction to addition and just add the opposite. Okay, so I'm going to say this is the same as 12. Change that to addition and make that the opposite. So that just gets us a 17. Now, y'all know other ways of doing that? You, when you got a minus and a negative right next to each other, that's the same as going plus plus. Y'all had a middle school teacher here at Harmony Grove that did the loop-de-loop -loop thing. So don't you go say Kessie, yeah? So all that still works. Just other ways to remember. Who was that? Miss Collier? Is that what y'all used to tell? Is she the one? Miss Heard? One of them. Heard. Heard. Alright, so I'm going to, um, on number two there, I'm going to change it to an addition problem. So I'm going to say negative 11.5 plus, and make that the opposite, so it'll be plus 6.3. So now I've got an addition problem with different signs. Addition with different signs means I subtract. So 5.2. And then will it be positive or negative? Negative because 11 is the bigger one and it's negative. So that'd be it. Okay. My last one there. Oh, I gave you a new common denominator on this one. What will the common denominator of 4 and 3 be? <coughs> So we're going to change them both this time. So multiply 4 by what? 3. three so we'll multiply the top by 3. I'm going to go ahead and change this to an addition. I'm going to make this a positive. I multiply 3 by 4. four so I'm going to put the top by 4. There you go. 9 and 8. And the looky look trick would work on that. No problem. Okay, so how about now, since we broke those down into addition and subtraction, I combine it like you had on your bell ringer and we see if we can do better now. Let's hope we can. Oh, Chase is always so optimistic. Never sarcastic. symbol. Okay, before you get too far on your own, on number two, what do those brackets tell you to do? Uh, solve that equation. You do it first. Good, 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 Baylor and Katie. You're going to do what's in that bracket first. 
Okay. Are those two separate questions? Yes. So you got number one and two there. Get an answer to them on your own real quick. And then check with somebody nearby and see if they got the same answer or not. Figure out what's going on. Good job. All right, got a real easy 
um, common sense question before we move to our multiply and divide. Let's say I gave you, have I done that? Got what you need? Say I just gave you two random numbers here. And I ask you to find the distance between those two numbers. Okay, Aaron's correct. It is 11. How did Aaron know that without even thinking? Okay, good. Mason and Kaylee both gave me both ways that I know how to do it. Okay, I'm going to go with what Mason said first. He's going to put those on a number line. Negative 12 would be to the left, and then there would be negative 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So Mason's going to count how many we got in there. And there are 11. See, I'll, I'll help you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. No problem with that. What if I gave you that, like humongous numbers that were over 50? You going to want to draw a number line and count all that? I'm not either. So this is why I'm going to jump to what Kaylee said, and you just subtract. So all we have to do is look at the absolute value of those numbers. 12 minus 1 is 11. Distance is always subtract. Okay. I had uh, some, well, how do you know that? I mean, what, how do you figure that out? So if you're driving, and I was doing this with my nieces when we were going to Dallas this summer, if you're driving down the interstate and you're at mile marker 98 and your exit is mile marker 142, um, how far do you got to go? Well, there's mile marker. They're called mile markers for a reason. There's a mile marker every mile. You just subtract those. They, they, they blew their mind, but they're just in the fifth grade, too. So. Where's the mile markers at? Those little, little bitty green signs. It's just on a T post, so it's not very big. And it has and then the exit so number the exit number is a mile marker also oh, good. so it's like exit number 42 that would be at mile 42 where do they start at zero most of the time it's when you cross the state most of the time but, some, but if you come in on the back end of the state <laughs> then I don't know yeah a different interstate would be no different yeah but you could do that like today going from here to mid Count your miles that way. That's the first thing that she's learning. No, actually it's normal. Alright, let's look at multiply and divide real quick. These are the easy rules. I've got seven times negative two. I've got negative uh three times negative nine. And then I'm going to throw you a fraction one again, negative 5 eighths times 16. All right, so we got every kind of sign issue possible with multiplying in that. Rules for multiplying and dividing are the same. There's no new rules. When you multiply, same signs, your answer is positive. When you divide, same signs, your answer is positive. When you multiply different signs, your answer is negative. When you multiply divide different signs, your answer is negative. So on that first one there, 7 times negative 2, is my answer going to be a positive or a negative? Negative. So that's easy, just easy. 7 times negative 2 gets me negative 14. On number 2, should my answer be a positive or a negative? Positive. Positive. Very good. So that will be a positive 27. Alright, I chose number 3 because I always get frustrated with how y'all are so scared of fractions. This you could, let me write this bigger over here to, to work with it. 16 is the same as 16 over 1, right? Yeah. So the rule when you multiply, first off, will the answer be positive or negative? Let's handle that. So that's what we're learning. Negative. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to have a negative something on this. Now you could, when you multiply with fractions, multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. That's what you do. Now, some of you might know what 5 times 16 in your head is. I believe it's 80, so that's not too hard of a one to do and then straight across the bottom, you would have to reduce at the end. It's my preference to reduce first because you get smaller numbers and you can work with them in your head easier. Well, how do you reduce this? Easy. Look at 16 and 8. Doesn't 16 over 8 reduce? Yeah. So that's the same as 2. So now I've got 5 times 2 and 1 times 1. So that's just 10 over 1. And don't forget your negative sign. If you had not known that, whatever that's, and you did straight across the top, you would have been looking at 5 times 16 is 80, 8 times 1 is 8, and what's 80 over 8 the same as? Mm -hmm. So you still get the same answer, so don't 
get, yeah, don't get bogged down if you don't understand all that. Okay, the rules for division, oh, yeah, that's the third one. The rules for division are the same. Let me give you a couple, three of those real quick. I got, what do you need there? Great. Uh, negative 15 divided by negative 3, number one. Negative 3 eighths divided by 11 sixteenths. And then 3 fourths divided by negative 7 sixteenths. So I wrote them all kind of different, got different looks on them. The first one's just pretty straightforward. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 rules the same multiplication. When they're same signs, our answer is positive. Positive. So that thing is correct. A positive 5. Nothing earth shattering there. All right, now these other two, we're dividing with fractions. Mm -hmm. So I told you you were getting a smidgen fraction review, and here's another one of those. What's the rule when you divide fractions? Who remembers it? No, no, when we one divide, say what was? No, that's what Zane just said. No, when we multiply and divide. No, multiply by the reciprocal. Oh, man, I knew that. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to keep the first one the same, so it's going to stay negative 3 eighths. We're going to change this division to multiply, and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, so we're going to flip the bottom one. And y'all are the ones, this, y'all that are seniors are the ones that taught me a shortcut on how to remember this last year. We keep the first one the same, we change it to a multiply, and we flip the second one. Keep, change, flip. Y'all taught me that last year. I've never heard that before. Is it not anybody that's in this class? I think, so, it was, I, think it, yeah. I think it was like Python. Yeah. But I, so I figured y'all would catch on to that. Oh, right. yeah, that's right. that's right. So yeah, the technical mathematical oh, term is multiply by the reciprocal. And then y'all threw that change flip in there that you remember. Okay, so we will my answer be positive or negative? negative. So I'm going to negative. put my negative there. Now this one, I know what 3 times 16 is, and I know what 8 times 11 is, so I could do that one first if I wanted to, but I also know 16 over 8 is the same as 2. So that gets me negative 3 times 2 on the bottom, 11 times 1. That doesn't reduce. That's my final answer. If I had done it the other way, it would have been negative 48 over 88. And then I would have divided by eight. Yeah. Landon Todd, please come to the high school office. All right, so the last one's written out. Same thing. We're going to change this to multiply, and we're going to take the reciprocal. So I've got three-fourths times negative 16 sevenths. Is my answer going to be a positive or a negative? Negative, good. 16 over 4 is the same as 4. So I've got negative 3 times 4 on the top, 7 times 1 on the bottom. Whoop, whoop. All right, I'm going to give you a few to do right there in your notes on your own and then check your answer with your partner. Everybody got what you need on that page? I'm going to give you a variety of the ones that we've looked at. All right. Let's look, see here if we can combine some of this with yesterday's stuff. About if I had absolute value that came from yesterday of negative 8 minus 6. There's number 1. And then number 2. That was the bell ringer. Don't do it. Uh, negative 10 minus 5 minus negative 12 plus 8. How are you getting those? And then the last one, let's do a multiply or divide. Negative 24 divided by negative 4. So there's your three. Get an answer to all three of those. Check them with somebody near you. See how you did. And then I'll call on you. Negative 12, my bad. 
It's got a short base. Second, we ready to try them? No problem, Mike. There's the working over here, too. Yes, sir. Oh, the yeah, it looks bad, but Chase asked me, and I told him, I think it was only you. He thought it was a 17. Value of negative 14 is 14, so fantabulastic there, Miss Custom. All right, number two, Aaron, what'd you get? Five. Five. Agree, disagree? Agree. All right, let me work it out here and go left to right. Negative 10 minus 5 is negative 15. Minus a negative 12 is plus 12, which is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 8, or what am I writing? Negative 3 plus 8 is five, so Aaron is exactly right. Good job. All right, the division one up there is probably the easiest one. Uh, what'd you get, Grace? Six. Six negative by negative is a positive, so it's just agree. making sure you remembered that one. I don't know what we would do, Chase. I guess we just have to disagree. All right, last thing we've got is a question in your classroom, and you've still got over 10 minutes, so you've got plenty of time to get it done. You, it's the same basis of what we've done today. The numbers are a little bit bigger because it's talking about somebody's bank account. So if you do need the calculator on that part of it, that's not a problem. But let me get it posted real quick for you. Got a new job at Arby's, so he's got some bank problems. <laughs> <laughs> 